Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 63 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Let's just get right to it. First one is called, Thank You for Interesting Film, Flat Earth. May not be English, let's find out. Mark, thank you for an interesting film. Wanted to ask you, one, why do you think that the border has not penetrated nothing more that is is not crossed? Yep, pretty good. Yeah, not English. Uh, two, why do you think that this world is not a prison or labor camp if, if we live by the rules of the prison? The only prison guard herself lives in prison. Three, why did you off religion... It can be all much easier if not to conjecture and not to drag in the biblical stories. Four, why do you base your film partly on fact and partly on speculation and have no desire to check it out? Would love to talk with you. We see you've spent a lot of time on this work and I hope you, this is really interesting and it's not just business. P.S. Sorry, English. I'm from, <laughs> that's great. Sorry, English. Apologizing for the English. You just said, sorry, English. I'm from another country, and that's from uh, Ev Evgeny Loganov. Possibly Eastern Bloc? Don't know. Uh, you know what? I will try to answer him a little later, because it's going to take me a while to figure out exactly what he was asking. Moving on. This one's called, have you seen this on Googly Earth? Guy found a wall in Google Earth. It's in Russian, but he only talks a little bit. And there's a link to the video, and the video is called, and the video is in Russian, so I can't read it. I can't even tell you guys what to what to click on. Uh, it's The whole thing's in freaking Russian. It was done January 14th of this year. So I don't know if he actually found a wall in Antarctica, but it's it's interesting. So thank you for that. This one's called, Hello, Mark, my friend. Hello, great work. You hear about the material that a man found, blue glass-like material that not can be destroyed by any weapons and energy. Best regards, Geo. And he spells it G-I-O from Freedom and Light 2018. Uh, yes, I've, I've heard about that. The blue glass, the, supposedly the, the blue material that the uh, firmament is made out of. Heard, heard it before. Interesting. Don't know if I necessarily buy it because if that was the case, I'm sure we'd find gl blue glass just about everywhere, right? Unless it was blue frozen water. I don't know. Uh, this one's called Throne of God paper. Hey, Mark, I would like a copy of the Throne of God paper. Thanks, Sandy. And I already sent that to her. And by that, I mean uh, there is a subject matter expert show that I did where an air traffic controller and a flight instructor were both on at the same time talking to each other. And one of the guys says, hey, I wrote this really cool deep paper called uh throne of god it's actually on my machine it's called harmony it's a pdf file it's about six megs if anyone wants it all you have to do is uh, email me to msargent23 at comcast.net and i will send it to you so have fun with that this one's called jacksonville meetup yesterday and this was sent back in January. Greetings, Mark. I wanted to let you know about the meetup yesterday. I think it turned out really good. We had nine people show up. We had an awesome conversation and great food. The guy in the picture with his wife and baby is an engineer. Kind of cool to think that little baby will grow up a flat earther. We made a call to Cam, Cam, Cammy. That was pretty cool, but very hard to hear because there was so much noise. We all went home with homework to find experiments to do at the next meeting. Here's some pics and a video. Have a blessed day, Karen. Thank you, Karen, for that. And yeah, if you guys do a meetup, it, I, I don't necessarily require it. And I'm, I'm happy to do the promos for as many, as long as I can, as long as I, I have the time to do a promo, I will. Uh, afterwards, would love to hear about it and would love to read about it if, if you guys do a meetup. And, and yeah, please send me pics and vid. And, and who knows, maybe I'll even include it. Uh, if you want, what I can do is if you send me pics and vid, I can include those. If you're going to do a repeat meetup, I include those in the next one. How fun would that be? This one's called What Globe? Mark, I'd love a bumper sticker that says What Globe? Simplest is best. That's from Matt Galloway. And there's probably out there. Type in Flat Earth bumper sticker. It type, whatever you need. Flat Earth merchandise. There's a lot of stuff being sold out there. 
not just books and posters and t-shirts, but stickers and I, all sorts of fun things. So check that out if you get a chance. You don't have to ask me for it. I don't have any bumper stickers. <laughs> I'm not actually selling anything. There's a, it's not like I'm sitting in a room full of, of, full of t-shirts. Um, in fact, the, the t-shirt link that's on the description box of all my videos, that's from the peanut gallery from Strange World. That, in fact, that's his daughter that is doing those t-shirts and I don't see a dime of it. It's just fun for her and uh, I believe in, you know, paying it forward. This one's called Be in Space. And that, I mean the buzzing bee in space. And there's a video on it. Hey, Mark, in case you haven't seen it. And the link is called, what's it called? Be in space. Total proof NASA is fake. Yep. I already gave it a thumbs up. And that's really awesome. Cool. Thank you for that. A lot of short emails to start. Email Q&A 12818. Mark, I was looking at sat phone coverage this weekend. There is no sat phone coverage on the same parts of Earth as you pointed out. No GPS. Not a coincidence. Take it easy. Vincent Michael from the Truth Faction. Awesome. This one's called P900 Focus Issue. Hi, Mark. There seems to be a huge debate about what the stars and planets or wandering stars look like in the Flat Earth community. This was recently brought to my attention and I had to test it for myself. Turns out a lot of people are getting this wrong. I was one of them. I did a simple test to prove what is happening and it is a focus issue with the P900 that is causing much confusion. The P900 is a great camera, but it is not a telescope. It is not designed for low light shooting. It does a great job on the moon at night, but it does a terrible job on any very small points of light. Anyway, I made this video to show the cause and effect. Hope it helps with some of the confusion. I am a flat earther and a bit of a researcher. Love all your work. Keep up the good fight. Oh, and I would like a survival guide, please. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for your time, Ron. Okay, Ron, anyone's out there lead with the survival guide because like this guy right here he's been waiting over a month and i haven't sent him a survival guide because he didn't put it in the title he didn't put it in the opening line i literally just read this i rarely when i when i skim through emails will i glance at the last line so now i gotta put this in my to-do pile and after i'm done with that then i'm gonna send him a survival guide uh, if you guys want a survival guide put it in the title just send me an email that says i want survival guide and i will shoot it off to you it's just a two meg pdf file called Empty Shelves. I wrote it after Katrina because I was angry that nobody in Katrina, even after the city was wiped out, uh, nobody, when, when they came back, when half the population came back, the, the ones that did come back, nobody got supplies. It's like, what? Just, just put some canned food, some canned water, a couple flashlights. It's all you need. Yeah. You, you'll know. Ask for the survival guide. I'll give it to you. All right. This one's called North Star. Hi, Mark. Really appreciate, appreciate your work. Just had a thought and wanted to run it by you. Did some checking and you're not supposed to be able to see the North Star from the South Pole. Is that correct? If so, why not? On a flat earth, you should be able to see it, right? Any info would be appreciated. Doug and Nancy Corey. And they sent me their phone number. Uh, no, because in a <clears throat> if the planetarium is big enough, you're going to have multiple display systems. In which case, you would have that split on that on the on the equator ring where some stars are going clockwise, the other going counterclockwise. And I know some people disagree with me, but that's how I would build it. That's how we do it in simulations. We've been doing it for 15, pushing the better part of 20 years now. Multiple display systems, easy enough to do. This one's called, this one's longer. No, not that long. This one's called Flat Earth Society. Roger that, Mark. I bookmarked your site and will be sharing it with others. Your videos are amazing. I've shared as much as I've been able to <clears throat> learn about Flat Earth with as many people who would listen so far. Most have been receptive. Only a few refuse to entertain the alternative. My sister told me that she discovered that she feels happier now that she knows the Earth is flat. After hearing her say that, it made me realize that I'm happier too. It was an unexpected consequence of a newfound knowledge. Anyways, I'm associated with a debate club and have injected the Flat Earth topic into the realm of debaters, which I... <clears throat> excuse me. Just had lunch which I hope to hear debated. I can tell that it has taken root. I fully expect it to sprout and eventually bear fruit. People in the debate world really seem receptive to it. I really thought it would be shot down, but after listening to a few points that I have shared from your video and others, it was more warmly received than expected. Thank you for responding to my email. Hopefully we can stay in touch if there's anything I can do. 
just let me know. And that's from Paul Martinez, oh, PhD, out of San Francisco. Awesome, thank you for that. This one's called Seeking the Truth. Hey Mark, I am new to the flat earth thing and I have a couple of questions. I'm only two weeks into the truth and these questions may have already been asked and answered, but I haven't heard or found the answers yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here they are. One, is there an answer to what caused the meteor crater in Arizona? No, because that was before us. Remember, before, there's gaps in all, in all civilizations history. So we our civilization goes back unbroken about 5,000 years. The Arizona crater is long older, way older, much older than we are. And that's what you would do between civilizations. You just start terraforming, doing a few things, decorate a few stuff. And the, the Arizona crater is a great talking point. Lots of people visit it. Lots of scientists talk about it. So yeah, it was there before us. <clears throat> I have not heard you talk about a movie that is about the space race and the uh, alleged urgency for the U.S. to get into space race after Russia sent their satellite Sputnik into space. The movie is called Hidden Figures, and it is about the NASA, oh boy, here we go, the NASA women who helped out the early NASA days to compute the cr cr crucial numbers to get a man in space to circle the sphere and get back to land safely. Uh, thank you for spreading the truth and newbie to the Flat Earth Freight Train, uh, Alan from Little Rock, Arkansas. Rock on, bitch. That's what he says at the end. And yeah, the, the Hidden Figures, Fight Enough movie was nominated for a whole bunch of awards. However, it still didn't cover the astronauts doing the whole moon thing. You know, you didn't see any footage on the moon. It wasn't about the Apollo program. It was about them. It was about the, the engineers on this side. So yet another space related movie, which doesn't really cover the most important thing, which was the journey to the moon and back. Never did. That's part, of, that's part of Flat Earth Clues 1, which is the empty theater, which says that even though we make movies about everything, we make sequels about everything. I mean, for God's sakes, Paul Blart had a sequel, Mall Cop. And yet we've never done a moon movie, ever. Never happened. The, the closest we got, if you remember the clues, closest two movies, you guys should know this. Uh, first one uh, would be The Right Stuff. And the second one would be Apollo 13. That was it. The right stuff was just an astronaut recruiting movie and Apollo 13 didn't touch the moon. It was shot entirely in a space capsule. It was supposed to land on the moon. Nope, just circled around. Oh, we might not make it back. And they did. Whatever. You'd think that after six missions, somebody would have died, but you can't. You can't allow that to happen because the, the moon is too universal a symbol. You can't let the moon be transformed into a headstone. Get it? Because then everyone would look up and go, oh, it's so sad. Those poor men. Especially if you left, especially if they died on the moon. That was the other thing. If you die on the moon, let's say your capsule just can't get off the ground. What are you going to do, right? You, how are you going to be rescued? You're not going to be rescued in time. Again, if you assume that you can get to the moon in the first place, which you can't. Uh, that, then all of a sudden, it's like, holy smokes, we're actually looking at dead bodies. They're not ever, ever going to let that happen. This one's called Sea Level and Elevation. Hi, Mark. Not sure how relevant this is, but have been hard for me to find the answer to. Is elevation measured with curvature calculated or just from sea level coast to coast? It's, it's only measured um, from... Uh, it doesn't it doesn't use curvature when you're when you're talking about elevation so it's where you are so if you go straight up from where you are that's that's where your elevation is uh, i've searched this many times a while ago and haven't found anything apologize if you answered this already uh, i've strayed a bit from fe but still on board thanks chrissy yeah chrissy uh, elevation is just measured on how high you are from where sea level is closest to you so uh when perfect example i was out i lived out in uh, colorado denver colorado and Boulder, I think, was sitting at, you know, it's the Mile High City. I think Boulder was sitting at 5,300, 5,400 feet. And that's 5,400 feet from sea level, meaning the ocean level. So when you're not, not lake level, you know, because there's lakes that are above sea level. So when you go to the beach in California or wherever beach, you're, as long as it's bordering on an ocean, that is considered sea level. That's hence the term sea. They really should call it ocean level, but whatever. No, it's probably carried over from something a long time ago. So that's it. I'm trying not to elaborate too much more on that one. 
This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, I was just listening to one of your videos that you mentioned you wrote a survival guide. Would love a copy. Keep up the good work. I've been looking to Flat Earth for a couple months and I'm hooked. Hard to wrap your head around all the deception. My girlfriend thought I was nuts, but when you step back and look at the big picture, everything comes into focus. She is intrigued. I will keep you updated if she dumps me. Ha ha. Keep up the good work. The truth is out there. Chris. Welcome, Chris. Moving on, this one's called Flat Earth Clues. Mark, I do love watching Flat Earth videos, but I am always struck when protagonists say, do your own research, okay? Looking at your theories in Flat Earth Clues, I noticed that everything you say is just that, a theory. Everything is temperatures declining towards the edge because when in fact you have no evidence or reason, ooh, this could be a troll email, to assume that there is a because unless you assume Christianity before trying to decipher what you assess to be the facts. Science is a set of rules that we assume to be universally true based on singular experiments and then apply to other situations once a certain amount of testing satisfi satisfies us that it will hold true. Science is not a religion, but it can, of course, be lied about. Between fact and truths, there is always a fear of what may be. There's a book written by my Kate brother, I think he didn't think, kid brother, called The Last Adam. Oh, Kate brother. Brother must be the last name. The Last Adam, which tells a story of a man who trusted in religion, but investigated using fact. And I believe you might enjoy having a read. His name was Guy Cooper, and you can find it on Amazon. I won't, it won't change your life, but it might interest you to see the journey he made. Best wishes and keep asking questions. Simon Cooper. I wonder if he's related to Guy Cooper. Could be a coincidence. Maybe not. This one's called 58 minutes and 15 seconds. One of the largest crypto channels talking about the flat earth. Cliff High and Crypto 2018 and beyond. Cryptocurrency stocks and real estate. Josh sent that to me. Josh from California. And the video, let me see bigger yeah it's a big crypto channel it's almost hitting six figures 98,000 subs and they're talking about flat earth at 58 minutes awesome it's good to hear good to know again we don't forget that the biggest channel in youtube history pewdiepie did his first flat earth video in fact he renamed it after the fact the video was initially called uh in fact i should look this up real fast the, the video was initially called proof the earth is flat but he just changed it three days later to proof the earth is flat meme review number eight because he was catching some hell and again it's it's cool that yeah a guy with 61 million subscribers it used to be 62 but he's lost uh, some as of late uh is is talking about flat earth it does nothing but help our our metrics at the same time you know, i've done some research on him and it looks like his marketing team, and I always suspected this anyway, that he had, I always heard rumors that he had a marketing team behind him that was bought, you know, that was really pumping up his numbers because 61 million isn't a ridiculous amount of subs, especially when, since the, the nearest celebrity of any kind is only at like 30 million subs. And that's still a lot, but that's uh, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's done a few things. Remember the arts, it comes down to uh, pit, the, you know, the five forms of arts, pictures, sculptures, music, dance, and literature. Justin Bieber's done several of those things. PewDiePie has done none of those things. PewDiePie made one video where he was laughing at a Minecraft zombie getting stuck in a tree, got a few million hits, and then all of a sudden they figured, ooh, let's take that money and just pump it into subs. And I don't even know how many of his subs are real now. So yeah, I don't want to go off on him. I, hey, look, he, he's number one YouTube guy. I just, I'm just not a big believer of famous for being famous. It's kind of like he's turned into the Paris Hilton of social media, which is how, well, I don't know, you can come up with another analogy. Anyway, let's move on. This one is called Flat Earth Reference HBO. Hey, Mark, just wanted to let you know I saw a Flat Earth reference in an HBO show called Vice Principles. Season 1, Episode 10. Go to the 11-minute mark and watch for about two or three minutes. I haven't heard this referenced yet. Also wanted to say great job with everything as always and look forward to seeing you again in Denver. The Raleigh, North Carolina conference was the best trip I ever took. So fun. Uh, Adrian from Calgary, Canada. Oh, and he sent me a picture. 
So I will put that in my pile and I will add that to the slideshow. This one's called, have you seen this video? Mark, I don't know if you get to all your emails. I do try. I can't get to all of them, but I'm, I'm working on it. This is my first time trying to get in touch with you. I started researching Flat Earth about a year ago, and of course, your Flat Earth Clues was one of the first videos I saw. I'm like Rob Skiba. I consider myself a Zetetic agnostic, but a Bible-believing Christian. I see the evidence leaning towards a flat plane of some sort, definitely not a globe spinning off in space at ridiculous speeds in every direction. I see that NASA lies constantly, so they not be trusted. Remember, guys, I read it as is some every once in a while. I try to fill in the grammar, but that's OK. However, I saw this video and others on this channel was wondering what your debate. What was your debate to this point? I see that you want to debate real scientists. And I recently heard a YouTube podcast on Dark 30 where you were, in fact, debating someone who claimed to be a scientist, in my opinion. I thought you and the other Flat Earth people clearly won the argument. Yeah, we destroyed them in the Dark 30 interview. However, I was just wondering what you thought about this particular video. Hope you're well. Keep making videos and we will all keep searching for the truth. And that's from Doug McCaleb. And the video is called... What's the video called? Undeniable. One simple and fatal flaw of the Flat Earth model from Greater Sapien. Oh, that guy. And he published it January... 24th, 2018, Annie scoring about a 40% thumbs down. Yeah, I'm going to think what everybody else thinks, which is he's not doing much with it. So I'll take a look if I get a chance. This one's called Flat Earth Graffiti by Ace Pro. Here's a try. Oh, my, my acronym challenge, which is Flat Earth. Um, so take the words flat to the letters Flat Earth and, and try to form words. So flat he turned into fortunately learned about the and earth. He turned into entire artificial reality, the heliocentric model. It's good. Thanks, Alex. I'd almost forgotten about that acronym thing. This one's called all videos back on Eric's channel, including JWO. Hi, not sure if you have seen Eric's new channel, which is up to 18,000 subscribers. All major videos are back up, including Jew World Order. I thought you said he got a strike for that and the con controversial anti-Semitic videos would not appear on the new channel. Take care, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff's completely mistaken. Eric's Eric DeBay's channel is not, it's not the same same one you're, you're thinking about. In fact, if I type in Eric DeBay, Eric... Do Bay. He did not put back up that video. He is up to nineteen thousand subs as of right now. Funny, you would have thought it would. You would have gotten up to a hundred thousand much quicker than that. He's been off for quite a while now, and so he's back up to nineteen thousand subs. And he did not put put back up the hate speech. He was, his channel, who had had six figures, was was taken down permanently for hate speech it's about as blunt as I can be. And he decided he was not going to put that back up because why would you, I mean, you're going to build your new channel and you, you throw up another hate speech thing. They will take it down even faster, but whatever it's his thing. I won't be doing any projects with him. This one's called firmament question. Mark, let me first say, I appreciate all that you and the tests, the test, <laughs> the rest of the flat earth community have done to bring this and other theories to the surface and show how the majority are just taking what the government and scientists say as truth instead of taking them as theories. And as with any theory trying to prove it correct, I believe it was Operation Fishbowl that was using nuclear warheads and used in high altitude detonation. It is claimed that it may have been an attempt to break through the firmament that may have been discovered while doing other operations in Antarctica. Most arguments place the sun and moon inside the firmament, as stated in Genesis. So my question is is if they were able to hit the firmament with nuclear warheads then is it possible they reached the sun and or moon inside the firmament N i doubt it i really really doubt it uh, i am fairly new to all this and have tons of questions yeah i bet i do however feel that we have been lied to and manipulated into believing we are on a globe I am not of that belief any longer and I'm seeking out as much information as possible on the subject. Thank you again for putting out all this information and allowing people to see and question for themselves. What is truth? Thanks in advance, Bill Gunny Hughes. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. 
This one's called Capricorn One. Mark, I am sure I'm not the first one to ask, first one to think of this, but when I was reminded of the film Capricorn One in your clues videos, it struck me as a potential psyop. Putting a film about a faked NASA event out there into the pop culture has a way of delegitimizing the overall concept. If the first time anyone hears about a fake NASA event is from a movie, it entrenches it in their minds. And at first and foremost, a fictitious idea, making it all the harder to convince a person that such things do in fact take place. That's from Darren in La Crosse, Wisconsin. P.S. I apologize for the tone of my last email where I clearly got wrong what you meant about nobody goes to Antarctica. My bad. Please forgive me. Oh, no worries. I actually like apology emails. I don't get a lot of them, but that's all right. This one's called Boss Battle. Boss Battle? Really? Hi, Mark. I just wanted to share an interesting experience I recently had. I feel it could inspire other closeted flat earthers to have confidence about their cosmological position. Being a somewhat closeted flat earther, I just had my first debate against a globe head. My boss. Oh, that's the term boss battle. It's good. I was watching some YouTube during my lunch. <laughs> It's going to go well. When he came by and saw the title, NASA is lying about everything. The earth is not a globe. It's in all caps. How could he miss it? Yes, I know I goofed. But when he said with a chuckle, ah, you're not a flat earther, are you? I didn't want to lie. I boldly said, yes, there's no evidence. It's a ball. It can't be proven. He was surprised, yet intrigued. He wanted to know why in the world I would believe this. Man, I hope this doesn't end with him being fired. I mentioned the lack of curvature in Coriolis effect, then horizon characteristics, gravity versus density and buoyancy, vacuums, and the conspiracy against God. As expected, he stuck to his ball like water in that fallacious model. Apparently, he saw the curve from an airplane. <laughs> nice. Anyway, the debate went better than I expected. Despite its impromptu inception, it was civilized without high tensions and name-calling. <laughs> yeah, as he's like writing, writing your name down for HR. Uh, alas... I've been outed. I knew this day would come. I just wanted to gather copious amounts of flat earth info in order to stand tall in battle. I believe it has paid off as I have been studying this subject matter practically 24 seven since my flat earth awakening about three months ago. Although I didn't anticipate the nerves involved in such confrontations, especially with my own boss, I truly believe I was able to hold it together just by using the knowledge I've gathered. I didn't stutter or say something silly. I avoided that dreadful lull and loss of words. I didn't freeze up at all. Awesome all good stuff. I simply steered the conversation towards another facet of FE whenever I felt my brain, well, felt my train of thought falling off track. The debate wasn't a win or a loss for either side. In my opinion, I just gained experience for future debates that will arise and confidence in my ability to stand my ground. I wanted to be ready and I all, I most certainly was. For any of you with concerns about people finding out your stance on the shape of the earth, don't fret. Do your research, seek the truth, which is self-evident, study different aspects of FE, gather the right info, and when the moment comes, use your weapon of words to educate the shit out of them. <laughs> awesome. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hmm, that's Proverbs 18.21. I did not know that. P.S. Can I get empty shelves and coast to coast, please? Most of this, keep up the work. Alex from Northern Virginia. See, he waited until the last sentence, and which is why he hasn't gotten his survival guide or the coast to coast interviews yet. So now I got to put his thing in the to-do pile, which means I have more stuff to do after this thing is over. This one's called, please have a look. Hey, Mark. All right. Click on link. The link is to Alexander Gerst, P Papier Flieger and Mini Hilly Flying Classroom. Okay, I'm not going to watch it right this second. Let's see. I've watched some of your videos and I just thought you might be interested in the one I found and linked above. It's the German astronaut Alexander Gerst folding and throwing some paper plane. I would love to see you commenting on that video. Otherwise, at least read your thoughts or read your thoughts about it. Okay. Best which is Chris. Okay, I'll take a look. I got a chance. This one's called Flat Earth Acronym and Underwater Video. Dear Mark, thank you so much for your response to my letter. I must admit that I'm quite a fan of stringing words together. In fact, I'd say that creativity is what I do most often. So I was rather excited to give your acronym challenge a try. I've got to say that I actually feel as though the one you came up with was damn good. 
it seems to almost say it all in a poetic, poetically efficient manner. Well, thank you for that. Uh, however, I still decide to take a stab at it for uh, nothing but my own satisfaction. What I came up with on my way to work was this. Okay, so flat, he, he does forever learning, always teaching. And then earth, he says, everything abides, reason, truth, heals. It's good. And they did a second one. Facts link answers together. Even assumptions respond to honesty. Oh, that's good. When I listened to one of your interviews, a guest referenced the idea of NASA filming astronauts underwater in order to portray them seeming weightless in outer space. It reminded me of something very dear to me. I grew up filming videos as a child, and as I grew older, I began writing and performing my own music. In the summer of 2015, I conceptualized a video for a song I wrote about the passing away of a close friend. Using my manager's equipment, he and I took to Saratoga Lake in Saratoga Springs, New York. Together, we shot and produced a music video for my underwater song, Linger. The catch was that we filmed all of my performance shots completely submerged underwater using simply a GoPro camera and a self-made dolly rig. It was absolutely incredible experience. To this day, the video and the song are my proudest creative achievements as an artist. It would mean a hell of a lot if you happened upon three minutes or so to check it out and let me know what you thought. Below, I included a link to the video as well as the making of segment, just in case you were interested from a technical standpoint. You know what? Gonna watch it. So I gotta remember that's gonna be in my to do pile as well. This one's called Masterpiece the Moon. Mark, I saw a video earlier that simply blew my mind and wondered if you have seen it. It's an artist's viewpoint of how the moon cannot be real. The way he explains it is incredible and with meticulous detail. Was thinking this might be a guy to interview and have on your show. Just a thought. Here's what he has on his YouTube video page. Uh, okay, okay, good. I will check that out. I get recommendations all the time and I appreciate every single one of them. This one's called Level Flight versus Level Earth. Mark, I liked your desire to test your own theories. However, as I suspect you have learned by now, you did not prove the Earth is flat. You did prove that at cruising altitude, your flight was level. What could have easily occurred is that the curvature of the Earth was compensated by the ascent. And, and, by the ascent and longer descent, making a lopsided traps, trapezoid with a curved bottom at the flight path from point A to point B along the surface. I would like to see more sophisticated experiments. This one is too simple to actually prove anything other than the autopilot software does function correctly. It would help if I can. I would help if I can. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. From the earth to the moon is this one. This one's called Mark. I know you hate being called Mr. Sergeant. <laughs> I know you hate being called that, but I don't feel like we know each other well enough to begin my email with what up dog. Seriously though, I just want to get your take on something that puzzles me when trying to see it from a globe perspective. That is how the earth supposedly interacts with the moon. Forgive me if you have covered this before. If I understand correctly, the globe model claims that the phases of the moon are caused by the effect of the earth blocking the sunlight. Now, part of this cycle is a phase called the new moon, when the moon is completely blocked by the earth. Also, lunar eclipses are claimed to be the result of earth completely blocking the sun. These are two different phenomena that are claimed to have the, the same cause. As far as I have looked, I have not found any global explanation of how this is so. Also, speaking of moon phases, globalists claim that the Earth produced a curved shadow onto the moon. What they fail to remember or mention is the phases of the moon that appear consistent with their theory can only account for waxing, waning crescents, and new moons. These make up less than half of the moon's appearance. The other phases appear completely inconsistent with their theory. During first and last quarter phases, the shaded area of the moon looks like a half circle with a straight line. During the waxing and waning gibbous, the shaded area looks like concave. It's interesting that they leave these out of the discussion. Thank you for all that you do, Chase. P.S. There is an area a few miles from where I live called Level Land, South Carolina. It's not so much a town as it is a spot on a map. I have attached a picture of a sign with a name on it. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to steal that picture. That's good. A town actually called Level Land. I'm grabbing that. All right, moving on. 
This one's called Forget Antarctica GPS Barely Works in South Carolina. Mark wanted to share a flat earth clue that was around me for years. In the area where I live, GPS is often miles off from where it should be. This was first brought to my attention on the day of my wedding in 2009. We had multiple guests from out of town find themselves led by their GPS about two miles away from the church. To this day, delivery drivers find themselves at the opposite end of our road from us, and Google Map marks our house at that location also. The only explanation I can find for this is the lack of nearby cell towers. Thank you, Chase. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, GPS is a piece of crap. This one's called My Personal Flat Earth Conclusion. Hey, Mark, I've been wanting to express my opinion on the flat earth theory to an official flat earth theorist for a while to get some feedback because I don't think either side of the debate will ever win. I will try to present my ideas as straightforward as I can. This conclusion I have come up with is that the flat earth versus oblate earth debate is a matter of perspective. From a perspective of a single observer standing on a spherical object, the only logical conclusion they could come up with for the shape of the object they are standing on is a flat surface. However, if you take into account the infinite amount of perspectives that exist, the object can be seen in its entirety, holistically recognized as a sphere. The FE perspective on the debate to me is more spiritual than anything because this perspective automatically begs the question, why would anything get created in this fashion? Why is this one location in the universe flat while everything else naturally organizes into spheres? I mean, what in nature isn't round? Well, trees, rocks, fruits, cells, atoms, other planets and moon stars, except Earth. I would imagine that your first response to my example above of a single perspective is that I am automatically assuming the object is round. By the way, round is not the right word, but I'm going to keep you reading it from him. Remember, it's sphere, ball, globe. Round can be 2D as well. Your dinner plate is round, a dining room table is round, a hubcap is round, roulette table is round. You know what I'm saying? But because I am not in a position to refute the last 500 years of scientific inquiry, experimentation, and proofs, I'm upholding the mainstream side of the argument to prevent how, I'm sorry, to present how the flatter theory can be construed as a correct way to describe the world. I hope this gets my ideas across. Please feel free to respond with any questions and clarifications. I have seen enough FE videos to know that this way of looking at the problem has not really been considered, but I would like to know what someone in your position as an official spokesperson for the flyer theory has to say about this idea. Appreciate your response. Look forward to hearing what you have to say. Uh, I don't know what, what the heck was his question. What in, what else in nature isn't a sphere except for Earth? What what, what in sphere isn't isn't spherical? Lots of stuff isn't spherical. Uh, I'm gonna have to read this again, but I'm not gonna answer this one now. We're moving on. He's gonna break break my rhythm. This one's called "I am watching your flat Earth doc on Facebook, and I would like to provide insight." Mark, my name is Jesus. That is all I will tell you of myself. It is my birth name. It also reads exactly so on my California ID. And I simply wish to let you know my interpretation, given the knowledge you have shared with me. The Earth is a galactic space crab. <laughs> I am not kidding. Living in a pond, a giant galactic space pond, that is the Milky Way, which would explain why our galaxy is a clean space. There is a life in everything. And by the way, I said Jesus because, you know, G-E-S-U-S, -S, otherwise known as Jesus. Uh, I think he actually wanted me to pronounce that as Jesus because he kept saying, oh, no, that's my birth name, Jesus Castro. Interesting. And thank you for that. Again, I'm not going to make fun of him. I start my day with flat earth. How can I make fun of him? This one's called the flat earth. Mark, the earth is flat. Then everyone on this flat surface should experience sunrise and sunset at the same time. That just doesn't happen. Uh, type in flat earth sun. You'll see it. Remember, you keep assuming the sun is this giant ball in the sky. The sun is only 50. If the sun is tiny, like less than 50 miles wide, that's a very, very small light source on something that's tens of thousands of miles wide. Moving on. Uh, thanks. Reading your book on the flat earth on my Kindle. Thank you for that. Uh, that's from John Doty. I, that's great. This one's called Your Incredible Voice. Oh boy. And he spells it U-R. 
Hi, Mark. I've been watching your YouTube videos for a while. You're always top notch. I just watched They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever, Flat Earth Clues. Wow, so much stuff. This first section is all in caps. I have been wondering what the giants and people did with all the 30 mile high trees and mountaintops and dirt from Grand Canyon and the boom, the Tower of the Babel. Of course, love the way you presented that. Technical question. I am a recording artist and engineer, and I was wondering what you record your voice through. Mike, Mike Pre, Tube, etc., because you have one of the warmest tones. I, oop, oop, oop. Stupid email. Hang on. Warmest tones I have ever heard. Very pristine. I'm sure a lot of it is just natural, pure gift from God. But if there's any technique you'd like to share, I would love to know. Thanks for all you do. Louis Louis. P.S. The red moon last night was a game changer. And he highlighted that in red. Uh, yeah, I don't use anything special when it comes to microphones. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, the Flat Earth Clues recorded on just a, a cheap set of Logitech gaming headphones uh, with a microphone on it. I mean, it's really, I mean, it's like 20 bucks. And then later I bought a blue microphone until Windows 10 decided that that didn't want to work well with it anymore. And now I'm using a Shure microphone, S-H-U-R-E microphone. But yeah, yeah, unfortunately, most of it's just my tone. It's my natural tone that I have had since I was, I was young and nobody ever told me. I mean, yeah, every once in a while someone would mention it to me, but I went to a fairly small school, so I never was encouraged to get into broadcasting or anything like that. And when I went to university, people were doing, I didn't spend a lot of time on the phone when I was at university, didn't do a lot of stuff in front of microphones until, until I did classroom training and a lot of tech support work, phone work, not, not chat room crap, a lot, thousands and thousands of hours of phone work where I would wear headphones or just use a handset. I'm, in fact, I'm more comfortable with the old school handsets than anything else. So thank you for that. It's, uh, yeah, as far as microphone, I mean, you can, you can buy microphones and, and software like, um, audacity that can, that can change your tone. If you're, if you're looking to, to create a, a more of a warmness in your voice, but for me, it's, that's what I got. That's what I have. And try to talk slower. Uh, the slower I talk, the slower you talk, you know, the, the lower you can, you can get, uh, you start speeding up and then all, you know, you're voice gets higher and choppier okay moving on from there this one's called chip baker oh chip baker sent me an acronym uh, instead of flat earth he did finally learning all truths every atheist returns to him kind of a biblical acronym for flat earth awesome that's from chip thanks chip really cool this one's called 33rd plane magnetic what the heck am i looking at here uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, is that a... M nope. Don't know what that is. This one's called... I think it was solicitation. This one's called... I don't... <laughs> okay, guys, when you send me an email, you don't have to put the, your entire email in the title bar. I don't know if you've seen this yet or if you are aware of it, but it is definitely something worth bringing some attention to. Watch... FE Core, the biggest laser experiment in history, Q&A pretest on YouTube. I am aware of FE Core. I know most of the members of FE Core quite well. And they went over to Hungary to do their big laser tests. And hopefully it went really, really well. In fact, I'm meeting up with Bob from Globebusters in three days down in Colorado. And, and uh, maybe he'll have some cool stuff to show us. This one's called Hello. Dear Mark, I watched your video published December 1st, 2015. I've always thought that the reason the Antarctic was a no-fly zone was because governments of the world were digging up artifacts there and wanted to keep those facts and their findings away from the citizens. Who do you think created the Earth? Don. Uh, I think the Disney Corporation actually created the Earth. Either that or Marvel Studios. One of the two. No, I, I, I think it was an advanced civilization or a divine power. But really, then you're kind of splitting hairs. What's the difference between a severely advanced civilization and a divine power? I mean, if you took some of the stuff we have now and you went back even a couple hundred years in a time machine, you would be worshipped potentially as a god or burned to the stake as a witch. Either way, it could probably happen. This one's called New Information. New Information, I hope. He spelled information with an extra T. 
A in fermentation. Wow. Okay, let's, let's see how it goes. Hello, Mark. I turned on to the Flat Earth Truth about three years ago. I am well beyond trying to convince myself that it is true. I have completed many of my own tests, but I am always looking for more pieces that will explain any of the unanswered questions about the Flat Earth model. I know that the sunlight position is one of those baffling problems, but I came across a video that seems to solve this major problem with the Flat Earth model. I don't know if you have already watched this one, but I have never heard you talk about how the 60-mile-wide sun could be seen from so far away without looking like a small dot in the sky. Although this theory is somewhat complicated, it does fit right into the Earth's magnetic field, and it is comprised of actual data from the sun's movement. I hope this information can be used to help make a 100% complete working model of our wonderful world. Keep up the great work and stay flat. David Kettler from Rainyville, Kentucky, and the video is called Flat Earth Absolute Must See. All right, I will click on it after I'm done here. This one's called Bible, page 772. That's, I don't think I've ever gotten an email that actually says page 772 of the Bible because there's lots of different Bibles. Yeah, you'd be close, but you got to actually list what version of the Bible. It doesn't matter. Um, Sirach, S-I-R-A-C-H. Which Bible is that? One verse three. Heaven's height, earth's breadth. The depths of the abyss. Who can explore these? My answer to the above, no man can explore these to their ends, but we can admire the divine works of our creator and praise his name. That's from Robert Don. P.S. Please debate our world's grandeur with credible Glober soon, my friend. We're all waiting for you to devour said person and doing so, opening the closed eyes of the masses with your knowledge. And yeah, you know what? I did a video, a Skype debate where we recorded our questions and answers where we weren't talking to each other live with a professor from Georgetown University. It was done by a German television team and I don't know what happened. I gave him my five big scientific questions. They're real, real easy to understand. And I mean, super quick, rapid fire. Got nothing from him. I don't know if he backed out or whatever happened, but I never heard from the Germans or anyone again. Uh, let's see, let's do this one. This one's called Down with Deception, Hooray Hive Mind. Mark, my name is Brian uh, Icock, A-Y-C-O-C-K, Icock, an organic farmer under the dome. Hmm, good. My initial realizations about the plethora of government lies and cover-ups started to happen very rapidly and progressively after the first zeitgeist, which led to a frenzy of 911 documenta documentaries and research, including documentaries, documentaries, whew, what's wrong with me? And research, including reading the actual 911 commission report, which eventually led me to watching the full and unedited filming of the Toronto hearings, which totally seals the deal. I became savvy about the world's central banks, especially enjoying the beast from Jekyll Island. I learned about the dark truths behind the world's chemical and pharmaceutical companies and all of the revolving doors between every notable regulatory agency and their constituent multinational conglomerates who are supposed to be regulated, re regulated by them. I had lost faith in our electoral and political processes long ago, but now I was morphing into a dark and gloomy skeptic and a highly tormented man, especially as a father of young children. I stopped consuming chlorinated, fluoridated water and began to eat only the purest food. I moved away out to the country and to tune out the noise, only consuming media that I chose or that seemingly chose me. Then I slowly began to understand that deception, propaganda, lies, trolling, the mass manipulation techniques have not only been present, but prolific for a long, long time. Presenting the truth would actually be a novelty as lying to the slave class is a rule not the exception. I've been on the flat earth fence for a staggering 12 months, wanting to su suspend both belief and disbelief for as long as possible. But after that first year, I couldn't hold on to my precious globe anymore and felt that flat earth truths permeating my existence. Now I'm halfway through year three of my flat earth research and I know in my heart and my mind that there is no going back. As an avid outdoors man, I have spent many, many nights under the stars for weeks and months at a time, and especially in the last three years since I started this vegetable farm in central Virginia. My entire life 
revolves around the seasons and the movements of the sun, forcing me to make constant observations of the natural world around us and what a beautiful construct it is. I am just in the past few months having conversations with individuals about the flat earth where I actually state my position. I've been in the closet now for too long and feeling so isolated and dark that I just don't see silence as a viable strategy anymore. I am still horribly conflicted by wanting to participate in our screwed, doomed society and wanting to live the life of a complete rogue where I stick it to the man in the hardest possible way. It's just so hard to feel free. I admire you so much for the work that you have done on YouTube and radio and for having such brass balls to just call it out just like it is, regardless of the inevitable public ridicule. I just want to reach out and say thanks for helping me discover the mother of all conspiracies as truth and for helping to make sense of what is otherwise an endless labyrinth of meaningless, meaningless lies. Mostly, I just miss my friends, and strangely, I feel closer to you fellow flat earthers than just about anybody else. If I weren't so damn paranoid, I would feel like it was a good idea to go to the next flat earth convention and actually meet some people. It, why, why, why not? Why wouldn't you go? Uh, it's all very terribly exciting. I just keep thinking of my role and how it will end. I think living in truth is extremely important and the hive mind will happen again. I do fear, however, that we will too easily be scattered and disenfranchised, our records and knowledge lost, and our languages confused like they were before. This is where I can't help but get off hardcore on the Star Wars theme of the insanely futile resistance against the all-powerful empire. It is true that it only takes one, and in fact, it really only requires the mind and intention. Thanks for also being so straight up with your contact info. I almost texted you the other night, but then I realized that you might be on air at that time. Which brings me to say that I would love to talk with you and your colleagues on record, but I'm not sure I'm ready to go on air. I mean, I feel like I'm still bound by this BS social contract, and I would lose my wife and kids. How the hell do you break out of that? Are you content with your role in all of this? Do you feel the media getting more desperate to alienate conspiracy theorists? How do you personally see it all working out? Your fellow flat earth friend, Brian. Yeah. Um, how do I see it working out? Let me ask, let me answer that last one. I see it working out where we win, where a hundredth monkey effect takes over and the world has changed. That's my goal. Save the world. Go home. You know, get, get out of here, wherever, wherever this place is. Uh, because I think we've we've reached our apex. Our civilization has run its course. We've jumped the shark, and now we're just grinding metal. I used several movie references there, but or media references. You'll figure them out. Uh, we got time for a few more. Let's do this one's called The Amazing Race, season thirty, episode six. Season thirty, The Amazing Race. Wow, wow. Hey, Mark, just want, thought you want to check out this Amazing Race Season 30, Episode 6. There was some stuff in the Flat Earth on it, and that's from Clayton. Yep, he was absolutely right. I checked that out myself. They, they the, Anything current, they'll, they'll kind of weave into the media, and they, they wove that into there, which is fun. This one's called Nikola Tesla. Hey, Mark, I've always been interested in conspiracies, the usual 9-1... Uh, 9 11 and JFK, the less usual, like celebrity deaths and clones and so on. I was recently watching a Nikola Tesla video on YouTube. Got a little disheartened when I heard him talk about planets and some other things conflicting with me and your flat Earth beliefs. Tesla was fascinated by numbers, and the numbers 369 in particular. Tesla wrote, If you only knew the magnificence of the numbers 369, then you would have the key to the universe. Could these numbers be the basis of a simulation similar to the Matrix? Clearly, the dude was a genius. Just wondered, do you have any thoughts regarding Tesla's stance on what we live on? Also, seen some interesting videos documenting, gl documenting glitches in the Matrix. Any input on glitches in the Matrix would be great to hear. Hope you read this email. Regular YouTube listener, Stephen from Ireland. Yeah, uh, Tesla said that this, this world was actually a realm. I can't remember exactly which book he wrote that in or where, where that quote came from, but I, I know that's the one we use a lot. So if he talks about planets, you know, he might be talking about, maybe he might be referencing planets. I mean, you see there's something up in the sky there. Can you land on them? No. But what else do you call them? I mean, technically they are planets, but they may just be balls of light. This one's called Grape Job Guys. Hey, Mark, new to this whole enclosed world thing, but I think it's phenomenal. Love your stuff on YouTube, except for the occasional French. <laughs> Because I swear every once in a while. But I don't, I, I don't generally swear on my own. I 90% of the time will swear because somebody writes it in an email. And I just kind of let it happen. 
Thanks a heap for all that info of the Earth is not moving away. Why is there low Earth orbit? And why is all in your stuff on YouTube two years old? Best regards, D. Oh, great. All right. Now I got to send D a thing saying, hey, my main channel. So I will send a thing to her. I got a lot of homework after this one. Uh, should we end it with this? It's a lot of questions. But this, this might be a nice one. Um, this, uh, good morning, Mark. Yesterday I was v viewing an interview on YouTube where the man interviewed raised some really interesting points in favor of Flat Earth. At the end, there was a link to your input on the same subject. It was over two hours long. Very interesting. Previously, I'd never watched any videos on the Flat Earth subject as I regarded it as, non as nonsense. But after watching two videos for a total of three hours, I began to have second thoughts. I have a few questions which I hope you'll answer as I really want to give this subject some open-minded viewing. One, if we live in a dome, how do comets penetrate it? Yep. Two, what about NASA's space station? How did it get out of the dome? It didn't. Three, where does the Van Allen radiation fit it outside the dome? It isn't there. Four, is it possible for an airplane to collide with any part of the dome? Nope. Five, is the dome solid or penetrable? Mm, tough one. I'd say both depending on your technology. Please understand I accept a lot of points raised in your video and the other one I viewed I am new to this also uh, I want to be sure God willing I will continue watching your other videos also others I may come in contact with you. Thank you Nikosi. I think he's African given his full name I'm not going to read it. All right, I think that's all we're going to do for this one and I, I you probably caught that I'm recording this before the meetup down in um, Colorado Springs uh, because I, I'm not going to be able to record something on Sunday when I actually do the meetup because normally I would do it at the exact same time so I'm recording this now on a Thursday and I will not release it until probably Saturday morning before I head out to the airport. So that's got it, guys. Uh, remember, you can send your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, stay flat.